All right, today we're going to start moving through how we can get gears set up so that they can animate on their own. So as we move forward, we're going to follow along step-by-step -step process to animate gears. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've opened up an assembly file and I've placed two gears and two shafts into this assembly file. And what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm actually going to grab one of my parts and I'm going to then come up here to free rotate and I'm going to spin this part around. And I generally tell all of my students never to do this, but I want to actually then use this as a way to discuss how our parts can be reset in our assembly space so that we can then start putting things together if they were all in a big jumble. So we can start adding uh, order and something that is constant to our assembly. The purpose for going through this uh, jumble mess and to get things realigned is I want then to go over here to my browser and under the assembly one there's a folder for relationships and then I want to head down to where it says origin. And these are the origins, uh, the axes and planes that exist in the assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually turn on the visibility for my YZ plane by right clicking and coming down to visibility. This is how we can actually utilize these planes in this assembly to start putting things back into a particular order for our build. So one of my shafts I did not spin and if I turn my drawing and actually take a look at the front view you can see that this shaft has not been spun. If I turn it is still parallel to my axis. And the other shaft I did. So this shaft is all befuddled and misoriented. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an easy constraint. I'll grab my constraint tools. I'm just going to use a simple make constraint. And I'm just going to select the center line of the shaft. And then I'm going to come and I'm going to select this Y, Z plane. And by doing that, it now is in plane with that particular um, Y, Z plane. I'll hit apply. Now I actually want to get it so it's going to be uh, parallel to this particular axis and there's a few ways that I can do that. I could use my constrain tool and I could then constrain this center axis to this center axis. Okay, But what that does is it moves the other one off plane so I don't want to do that. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to find another plane I can use. So I'll go ahead and I'll turn on the visibility for another plane and I'll go ahead and grab my constrain tool again and use center axis to this plane. Now I can then turn this and see that they are now both in line with each other at this point. I can go ahead and hit apply and then cancel. Now the only problem with this is that one of these will move. This one will only slide on those two planes. I may need to move this around again to have more freedom. But before I do anything else is I'll go ahead and apply the constraints to, from gear to shaft and then I may go back in and delete some constraints. So what I've actually done is by putting this constraint on, I may delete it later and only use that constraint for uh, positioning. And I can see over here in my browser, these are the two mates. Here's mate one and here's mate two on that particular shaft. And I can easily go in and delete them. If I delete that and delete this, the part still stays in position, but the, the, the constraints are no longer on it. I can move it around. As long as I don't free orbit, this shaft will stay parallel and properly uh, oriented to my axi planes. Okay. Okay. Next thing is we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, constrain the gear to the end of the shaft. And instead of actually using the constraint tool, what I want to do is I want to use the joint tools. And when I select the joint tool, the actual joint type that I want, I don't want to use automatic because Sometimes that gives me a rigid constraint and then I have to go in and change it. I want to actually use a rotational constraint because I know I want this gear to be able to spin. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab this uh, rotational tool. So I select the rotational tool from there. And then I'm going to come down here and the thing I'm going to grab first is the gear because I want the gear to move to the shaft. Generally it's the first thing that you grab that gets moved to the second object. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is number one is highlighted. That's the first object. And I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go ahead and select the front face of that gear. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select the end of the shaft. And then I get this little movement where it actually moves over to the end of the shaft and then does a little spin to say, oh, well, this is where I'm going to go. And this is what I'm going to do if you put me there. So I'm going to say, yup, I hit apply. 
And then I'm going to do it again because that's what I wanted to have happen. And for me, I actually want not the face I see here. I want the other face. So I'm going to grab it through the hole there. And I'm going to take it to here and apply it to there. And it should spin around. And actually, that's the wrong side. So I'm going to just go ahead and hit that button. And then it rotates itself for me when I hit this opposite button. Okay, because I want to actually have my sketches on the outside so I can adjust and maneuver this gear utilizing those sketch faces. All right, so with that good, I'm going to hit apply and then cancel out. Okay, so now that we have our gears set up, that they have rotational constraints on our shafts, what I'm going to do then is we're going to go ahead and we have got to get these gears to start lining up, start putting them together in, in some semblance of order. So what I'm going to do is <coughs> so I'm just going to utilize uh, this plane to do that. So I'll grab my constraint tool and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to grab the face of this gear and then I'm going to go ahead and grab the plane tool or the plane itself. What that's going to do is it's going to turn and make that plane face uh, in plane with the uh, Y, Z plane. I'll hit apply and then I'm going to do it again with the other gear. So I'm going to go ahead and turn them both so that they are both in plane to each other. Okay. All right, while we have our gears and the gear faces are in plane, we got to bring the shafts down so that they line up as well. So we're going to grab the constraint tool. Now I'll grab the center axis of the shaft, and I'm going to grab this plane. Hit apply. I'm going to do it again to this plane. Hit apply. And now our gears line up as faces and the shafts are all in alignment with each other. The gears will still be able to slide back and forth and go through each other, that's the next area of constraint that we need to work with. To help that we can uh, visually see the sketches on the face here, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the visibility on my planes so that I do not need to, to see through them anymore. Uh, what I'm going to do is start looking at these gears. And as talking about gears here before, uh, we're going to actually have our gears line up using our pitch diameters as our tangent surface. So what we'll do here is I'm going to grab my constraint tool and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my tangent constraint now. So it's my tangent constraint. And then I'm going to select the first pitch diameter and I'm going to grab the second pitch diameter and then they will actually mate on a tangent relationship using that pitch diameter. So I'll go ahead and hit apply and then cancel. If for some reason you do not have a... Uh, circle here that you can work with. If you double click on the gear, two things could happen. It could open up the actual object if you have it opened in the background and then you can get into the part and you can get into the part and you can work with the sketch, the original sketch. You can right click and turn visibility on or off and that visibility will then translate through to your assembly. So if I come back to the assembly, it can show up here. If you do not have that particular gear open, I'll go ahead and close that file. If I don't have that gear open and I double click on the gear, what it's going to do is it opens this gear, but you have not left the assembly environment. If you look at my browser over here, my gear, my gear 5 diameter 20 press 22, that gear has been highlighted and everything else is grayed out. Whatever I do to this gear now is actually being adjusted and changed in the file. It's in the inventor part file. So it's not in my assembly, but it will update any parts through. So if I were going to change something here, it would update through to my other drawings. Okay. To get back to the assembly, I just hit this return button and it takes me back to the assembly. Okay, so with tangent, you can see teeth are overlapping. And I can't actually spin my gears. They just slide together. So what I'm going to do is I want to take and I want to move. And I want to actually ground my shafts. I don't want my shafts to move away from each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into one of my shafts in my browser. Right click. Come down and just hit the word grounded right here. So that's grounded. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to my second shaft. So I'll grab that. Right click. Come down and hit grounded. I'm going to go back and look at this on an angle. And then what I should be able to do is spin one of my gears. And I can spin the other gear as well. But what's going to happen here is you can't really see that they're spinning together. One just spins on a shaft. 
Okay, that's because there's a rotational constraint to the shaft. They are spinning to be tangent, which is good. So what I want to do now is I want to set up the proper relationship between the two gears so that I can then have them set themselves up and have the teeth actually be in the right position. Now, you can go ahead and move this little by little and little by little to get this so that you could say, oh, wow, that's aligned perfectly, and they're really sort of just eyeballed. But what we're going to do is we're going to take through and we're going to actually set up some constraint lines and then utilize our planes again to then start aligning these. All right. So what I'm going to do is I want to start sketching on one of my gears. I'm going to show you how to get this information in here. So I'm going to double click on one of my gears. This gear is now active. And what I want you to do is we're going to draw a line from the center. In fact, I'll go ahead and delete all of mine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get a sketch on this face. And I already had a sketch sitting there, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to edit that sketch. So what I'm going to do is I need to get a line that's going to run from the center to what would be the center of a gear tooth and from center out to what would be the center of the space between the two. Easy way to do this is I'm going to grab my line tool and I'm going to draw a line from the point where the two arcs came together, my big R, little r, and I'm going to draw directly across my gear to the other side. And I'm going to do that twice, once on the tooth and then once in the gear space. After I do that, I'm going to draw a line from the center of the gear out to that line I just drew, making sure that it is perpendicular. So I'm right in the center of that. And I'll do that again here, making sure it's perpendicular. Once I do that, I have got the lines where I can use to align my gears together. So then I can finish my sketch, and then I can go back into my assembly by hitting the return. Once I do that, my other gear will then have that same information on it, because if I drew it on one gear, and it's the same gear, it will show up. Okay, now we're going to get set up, is we're going to go ahead and we're going to set these gears up so that the teeth actually match up properly. To do this, we're going to go ahead and turn on the uh, my XZ plane, so I can see the visibility on that, because I'm going to use that plane. I'm going to now grab my constraint tool, and I'm going to then constrain this line to that plane, and it actually jumps to that plane, so it is now turned and been linked to the plane. I'll go ahead and hit apply, and then on my other gear, I want this line, which is the line that's in the tooth gap here, not on my tooth, but the gap, to come around and link up to that face as well to that plane and then I hit apply and then hit cancel and when I look at these I can come on and I can say my teeth are exactly uh, correctly positioned directly between each other now the only thing is that I can't turn them anymore anymore okay well that's all right I've used this constraint to position so I'm going to go back and then delete the mate I know it sounds a little weird you go ahead and you create the, the constraint and then you go and delete them just don't turn your gears and you have a perfect relationship. Next thing we'll do now is we're going to set up the rotation. Okay, in order to get these things to turn now, what we'll do is I'm going to grab my constraint tool. I'm going to then go to the motion tab for place constraints. And I'm going to select the front face of the gear. Now you can see on the icon that my icon actually has a circle that goes around the selection tool. So it's telling me that if it spins this direction, that's the way it's going to turn. Then if I come over this gear and select it, it's telling me if this spins this way, this one's going to spin this way. Well, that's not what's going to happen. If this spins this way, this one's going to go the other direction. So I have to reverse. And then the arrow over here reverses. So as this turns this way, then the other one needs to reverse. So now I'm going to hit apply. Cancel out. Now if I grab a gear, well, didn't move, so i got to figure out what's still grounded and why they won't turn. Looks like this mate needs to be deleted. I must have inadvertently not deleted that mate. Uh, keep looking, keep looking. Let's see, oh, that one needs to be deleted as well. Now we'll turn. So now we have a one-to-one -one rotational relationship between the two.